Ladies and gentlemen, I'm back with another video. And today I'm going to be getting into the Word of God and I want to open up some truths from the scriptures about how we can properly deal with specific relationships. The Bible does say in the latter days that there will be many offenses. Offenses shall come during these times. And how do we react when somebody gets offended, somebody does something to you that you may not like, maybe they're persecuting you, maybe they're mistreating you or giving you an attitude. What does the scripture say on how to properly deal with these things? Instead of being complicit with that activity, we need to stand strong and act godly, and we need to represent Christ when these situations arise. So without further ado, I'm going to be jumping right into the book of Proverbs chapter 6, and I believe that God has a word for you today. So before I jump into the Word of God and read the book of Proverbs, if you have not subscribed to this channel, I encourage you to smash that subscribe button right now. You can hit that subscribe button below and I would really appreciate it. And if you could also put a like on this video, it would really help this video out a ton and it would be a blessing to me. So anyway, Proverbs chapter 6, and I'm going to read verse 2. What does it say? Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Now verse three says this, do this now my son and deliver thyself. When thou art come into the hand of thy friend, go humble thyself and make sure thy friend. This is the book of wisdom, Proverbs, and it gives you a lot of wisdom keys on how to deal with relationships, how do you deal with situations, investments, how to be wise in your life. So this is a very powerful admonition here from the scriptures. And what does it say? It says, Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Proverbs 6, 2. What does that mean? That means when we speak certain things that are negative, we speak things that are, you know, that may not be godly, we can eviscerate somebody, besmirch, slander, or do whatever, you know, smear somebody's, you know, character, that's ungodly. Or we can just say something that's, you know, hurtful, and make mistakes and say things that we're not supposed to say, and what happens? If we do that, we've caused friction. Maybe someone's doing that to you, it's the opposite. They're speaking evil against you, or they've given you a dirty look, or they're saying something that's not nice, they're discouraging you, they're, they're trying to knock down your reputation, they're trying to hurt you some way, what do you do? The Bible says we're snared with the words of our mouth, so, we should not render evil for evil. That's the first thing that's very important. Secondly, we've got to watch what we say. But if we do say something that's wrong, or if somebody else does, there's this proper way of handling this. Now, offenses are going to come. Sometimes it's going to happen, beloved. People are going to treat you wrong. They're going to say things that are wrong. Or they may, may, they may not say anything, and they're just giving you an attitude. How do we deal with this when people are hostile? How do we deal with it? Well, the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, I love this scripture. It says, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, and do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That's a very powerful passage of scripture. We're supposed to love our enemies. We're supposed to bless those who curse us. So how do we bless those who curse us? We pray for them. We lift them up in our prayers. We try to give them love. You don't have to be close friends. You don't have to be a camaraderie with them and have, you know, a great relationship with them and have uh, that friendship or association. You don't need that, but you can still demonstrate godly, Christ-like character, beloved. So what does it say? So we can be snared with the words of my mouth, but verse 3 says this, do this now. So Proverbs is saying, what happens when there's a friction going on, whether it's between you and them, them and you, they offended you, or you may have said something, how do you deal with the situation? Whatever it may be, it says, do this now, my son, and deliver thyself. This is how you deliver yourself from that issue. Because silence, when it's quiet, when nobody's speaking, it, the tension gets harder, it gets worse, it gets, I don't know, it becomes more of a grudge, it, it just, it is not good. It's not healthy. Communication is always important. When there's a communication breakdown, 
that's never good. When there's no communication and there's frustration, then all of a sudden we can surmise certain things in our mind and then the enemy can get in there and start speculating and, and, and trying to come up with all kinds of things to bring more friction to your situation. But it says this, do this now, son, my son, and, and deliver thyself. When thou art come into the hand of thy friend, when you are dealing with a friend who's you got an, an issue, whether it's a, a buddy or whether it's a, a, a sibling or whether it's a relative or maybe a, a coworker or, or somebody in church, whatever it is, whatever your relationship situation is, and you are a friend of them somehow, an associate, it says, go humble thyself and make sure thy friend. We're supposed to humble ourselves. We need to be the bigger person if we're Christians. We need to take the high road. That's what we need to do because God wants us to have strong relationships because the Bible says when two or three are gathered in my name, I am in the midst. Where there's unity, there's power. Satan comes to divide. He wants to divide families. He wants to divide friendships. He wants to divide brothers and sisters in Christ. He wants to bring all kinds of trouble. He wants you apoplectic towards somebody. He wants you frustrated. He wants you angry. But what we need to do is we need to be the bigger person, humble ourselves, let go of the pride. That's what it means. You know what? They're wrong. I'm right. So I'm not going to talk to them until they fix this. See, that's the pride. What we need to do is whether or not they're right or wrong or whether or not we're right or wrong, we need to go fix it. The Bible says that we, which are spiritual, restore such in one that's weak, you know, we're supposed to go to them, restore such in one in the spirit of meekness. So humble yourself, be meek. Meek means gentle, it means kindness, doesn't mean weak, it means powerful. What you do is you go to them and you say, you know what, I, I don't know what's going on, but maybe we need to talk about this. Was there something I said, you know? I'd like to try to resolve the issue because I love you, you're, you're a big part of my life and I don't want to have friction between you. If you can't talk to them, and they're not talking to you at all, and there's no way you can talk to them, then you need to pray. You just need to keep praying for them. You need to keep praying. You need to keep trusting God, and God eventually can break those barriers. He's an amazing God. Remember, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. So God is a good God. and He knows how to bring relationships back. He can restore any relationship. But if you're in a situation where you're communicating with them, and it's not like, no communication at all, and you have an opportunity to make it right, then do so. Now, if you go to that person and they come against you with vitriol and they're frustrated and they're giving you a bad attitude, don't let that make it worse. You know, just say, okay, no problem. End the conversation in a nice way and then go and pray for them. Don't give up. You know, your job is to go humble yourself and do your best. You know what? It says if they repent, they repent. Sometimes they don't repent, even when you go to them. But if they do, then you've gained your brother. You've gained your sister. What did Jesus say in the book of Matthew, chapter 18, and verse 15? He says this. It says, moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. So if somebody's trespassing against you, if they have offended you or said something or done something that is not, you know, making you feel good, go to them. Sometimes people don't even know they made a mistake. They don't even know they offended you. They think that everything's fine. They inadvertently said something that was not, you know, pleasing to you and they didn't even realize it. That's why we, instead of letting it build up, the Bible says, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place unto the devil. The Bible says that we need to go to them. Don't, the more time that goes by, the worse it gets, the more friction. Why? Because you're giving place to the devil. Now he can enter in. God wants us to have great relationships. You know what? We're supposed to love our neighbor as ourself. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. That means we gotta forgive. That means we've gotta pray for them. That means we've got to follow Christ's example of forgiveness because Christ, he forgave us for our sins. He died on the cross. He's an awesome God. He forgives us every day. He gives us grace every day. He gives us mercy every day. And that's what he does for you and me. And so what he wants you to do is try to make those relationships right. Sometimes it will happen where it, it, it's right. It works. Other times, it may not work at the beginning, but that's when you get on your knees and you start praying. 
making supplication to the Lord and diligently pray, and God will work it out. He's a God that likes to bring relationships back together. And it's so hard when we're in this flesh. We want to get revenge. We want to hold anger. We want to get them back, you know? That's the enemy. What we need to do is say, Lord, give me that love. Give me that love. Give me that patience. Help me, Lord, to be that child of God that will love my enemy. Because the Bible says, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. That's what we need to do. When we do that, we are shining our light. We're letting our light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. If this devotion blessed you, encouraged you, I ask you if you could put a comment below, that would be great. If you could subscribe to this channel, that would be amazing. And may God bless you as you continue to follow his plan.